Hello Amiga Coders. Uh, we're up to our 30th tutorial and it's been a long time since I said hello Amiga Coders. Uh, but now we're going to start coding again. Uh, specifically I'm going to make a short tutorial about um, putting, making your demo play a song. So here's where we were a long time ago. Uh, in a galaxy very near to this. Um, <coughs> so here's our demo. We can reacquaint ourselves with it. We have a section here. We include some um, symbols for the custom chip register names. Here's our uh, constants for various uh, buffer and graphics sizes. Here's our start. We turn off the operating system, we call our init, which uh, basically just initializes the copper with bitplane pointers and what have you. Uh, we start that copper and jump to the main part of the demo, which is the only part of the demo. It's a single single part of the demo. It's a single screen screener. It's, uh, there's just one part. And after we exit by pressing the leftmost button here. Uh, we turn the system on again. So uh, we have our module. We've converted it to the player format, and we wish to use the player play routine. First of all, a note: um, download the archive again if you downloaded it yesterday, because I've um, updated it. Uh, no real functional updates, but I've um, made it a little more a little more cleaned up and compatible, and uh, renamed some of the options to avoid uh, naming conflicts. In other words, two variables that are named the same. Sometime in the days of yore, someone decided that start was a very good name for a for a constant in a commonly used to play routine. Um, and that's basically it. I also changed a few others. So, uh, we where should we call um, P61 init, which is the um, subroutine that starts the song, and where should we call P61 end, which stops the song and restores the DMA, sound DMA, and so on? Well, it would be logical to put them either side of this uh, main loop, right? So that's what, uh, what we'll do. Uh, first of all, um, unzip or unarchive uh, your the archive that you downloaded. Is at the exact same uh, URL as the previous tutorial 29. Um, and unzip it to a subfolder of ASM school. That's where I put them anyway. Um, and load your source and go to the bottom. Here's our little handy uh, spreadsheet, I guess, for calculating min terms. Uh, everything here is 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 uh, just notes. So first of all, put a bookmark on the line below the last line. Amiga shift 1. Then move away from that line and then include a file in that subdirectory called p6109example. We're just gonna copy some snippets from the, from the example source. Now if you know that uh, your song works in, in mode 1, then all is fine. Uh, and all of them do, uh, actually. But what I meant to say was, if you know that you want to use uh, this mode instead of the V-blank mode or one of the more optimized modes, then all is fine. All you need to do is copy the options. Control X to cut cut off the, the header. Here are the options. Just copy those all the way down to and including the mode that you're using. In our case, mode 1. So all the way down here to the 
end of those mode specific options control X remember we have the bookmark set so we can press Omega 1 to get back to this point in the source uh, and just paste them at, at the top basically here, here is a good a place as any and go back to Omega 1 to bookmark 1 and you can safely delete the other modes mode options here's our code start and here's where we have uh, uh, the included startup code to turn off the, uh, the OS in the example. We're going to cut that off. And here's our call to P61 init. Um, we can remove this line because we're not using mode 3 or 4. Uh, I mean, it does no harm, but we will not have an address called cop poke. In, in our source, so just cut it off and copy this whole thing to the top again and we're looking for the call to the main loop, so just paste it before there now, here's an important thing uh, none of the uh, calls to the play routine P61 init, P61 music and P61 end and also P61 set, set position neither of those save and restore all registers uh, from the stack that means that at the that this subroutine will modify a few registers and also loading these registers might destroy something that you want to have saved here like for example we have this ugly by now ugly uh, way of saving away registers and then when we hit the main loop we save them away and that's a bit too late in the game uh, so, what do you do? Well, you put them on the stack. You can you can copy this. You can put a bookmark. Put put bookmark two here. I mean, shift two, and go to main colon, and I accidentally the caps lock. You can copy the line. It's very simple. And down here is where we restore the registers. But I, as I said on the way to this main subroutine uh, register contents can get lost. It's a good idea to to wrap unknown subroutines that you put in your demo, whether you wrote them yourself or not. It saves checking which registers they're using. It's a bit of a... I, I don't know, it's not a waste of time. You're not... you're not... I mean, you're not ray tracing or rendering fractals while you're doing the the music initialization. So a few cycles here will not hurt at all. So save all registers, restore all registers. And in between that you call the init routine. Um, quick explanation. This is the module address. These are set to zero because you're not using those options. And this last option is the PAL or NTSC mode. Zero means auto with a preference towards PAL, one means PAL and two means NTSC for you American listeners out there. Um, so that's the initialization routine done. Uh, then we call our demo and when we exit it we want to restore uh, the sound and that's uh, I guess simpler. It will also destroy bunch of registers I guess so do the same thing I'm saying I guess I know that they destroy a few registers maybe a few unimportant registers and maybe your source already saves and restores all registers just after this ours doesn't so good idea again wrap it in save and restore you can make macros for this I have a macro called uh, push, and if you don't supply it any param par parameters, then it saves and restores all registers. Anyway, so push and pop from the good old Z80 days. Uh, so there you go, and of course we need to change that to P61 end. Strangely not called exit, but I'm not prepared to go against tradition name it. 
Uh, so P61 end, and this simply stops the uh, background interrupt from playing the music and um, turns off any sounds that are playing. Um, so that's it. But if we assemble this, of course, it won't find these routines because that's all in our little include file. Um, where should we put it? Well, we have some sections here. Here's where the chip section, chip data section starts after the data here. If you're a purist, you could you could include it before the data starts. If you want to keep all the code in the same spot. Maybe you have very big declarations here. Maybe you include some graphics. Well, not graphics, but anyway, big data. So uh, either you put it last in the in the code section or just before the data in the code section. This is as good a place as any. So well we can copy this, set a bookmark, let me shift two, let me shift one. Let's see what else we have here. This is where the example routine calls P sixty one end. Um, um, and exits uh, the example, and here's a familiar thing. And there's an even command here, that's important. Uh, so why not just copy this whole thing? Go back to our bookmark, paste that, and that's our play routine code included. Now, the reason for the even command here. I mean, now it's unnecessary, but uh, what if you would put a DCB0 here? Then the address would be odd, and when you assemble, you'd get um, an odd address error, and you'd scratch your head and maybe include the text inside the source, and it's unnecessary. You always put an even before uh, includes that could require an even address. And code, which is in this include, certainly does. Uh, go back to our bookmark, and we don't have much left here of the slaughtered example routine. As I said, we have our own copper, and we're using the CIA mode, so we don't need this weight or this uh, copper poke address. That's for advanced users. Uh, all we need to do is include this module. So, and we don't need this commented outline. So, co copy that, go back to the bookmark. Where should we put it? Well, obviously in the uh, chipmem section, which is here, and it's data, right? Because it's a module. So where do you want to put it? First or last? Doesn't really matter, but I put them last because I want to reach all these labels. Um, they should be within reach, whereas the module is a big chunk of data, and so there'd be just the one reference to that. So in the interests of avoiding um, PC relative, uh, two distant PC relative addresses, I'll put it somewhere. It should be, well, I guess, here. Uh, now, of course, if you have a bug in your demo, you should be aware that when you blit to this area, if you have uh, the wrong size value for the blit. It could very well blit into the module. So it's it's up to you. First or last, doesn't really matter if you did your job correctly. And if you didn't, all hell breaks loose and then you get to go. That's the, that's the Amiga way. So anyway, that's our module in the correct section and we're done with the import. Almost. Uh, because we're going back to the call to the main loop here. And what you want to make sure is that when you restore the DMA here, there could be bits set for the sound channels. Now, the, the P61 end re restores that. It should go completely quiet. It will go completely quiet, but maybe only for a few microseconds until some value that you don't know is set here. 
because you just add this uh, DMA set bit to the value without knowing what it sets. So either you can remove the four bits from D3 uh, before setting it, or you can um, clear the four bits manually after setting it. It's not a big deal. I think it's more readable like this. Make sure sound DMA is off. Now, if you had a song playing before you started your demo, then that means that that song will not continue playing after the demo. That's, a ri th that's the risk you take. I, mean, I think it's much better to absolutely know that, you're, that no sound will continue playing um, after your demo exits. Just a safety measure. So that's tutorial 30. So does it work? Well, of course it works. <laughs> or it would if we had supplied the correct path. And by the way, I took the liberty of renaming uh, the p61.newditty.mod. Remove the end suffix because it doesn't make much sense. It makes sense here because it, this mod dot and the dot mod works with all Pro Tracker versions. Um, but when it's converted, of course, it's a p61 module, so it doesn't make sense. Save that and see if we have sound, Houston. Yeah, we have a bit of work to do before the demo will match the song, I think. Um, basically, I just made the song on a whim and let the whatever thoughts went through my mind lead me to the song that ev eventually came out. So. But anyway, we're going to make the demo better uh, in the next tutorial. See you then.